this video review is going to be about a science fiction book called Empire from the Ashes by David Weber. The name Empire from the Ashes is the name of the omnibus reissue that was published in 2003. It contains a trilogy. The first book of the trilogy is Mutineer's Moon, published in 1991. The second is The Armageddon Inheritance, published in 1993. The last is Heirs of the Empire, published in 1996. There are five main events that underlie the story in this novel. First, the moon is hollow. It is a spaceship that has been in orbit for over 50,000 years. Second, humans are not originally from Earth. They got to Earth on the spaceship that's now the moon. Third, the reason humans got stranded on Earth is because there was a mutiny that took place on the ship 50,000 years ago. Fourth, there is an alien menace that is going around the galaxy killing all life that they meet and they're headed this way. And fifth, humans were part of an empire, an interstellar empire that collapsed thousands of years ago. In Mutineer's Moon, the story opens up 51,000 years in the past. There is a mutiny happening on the Imperial capital ship Dayhawk, which is in orbit around Earth. The captain floods the ship with radioactive gas, causing loyalists and mutineers alike to flee down to Earth. The story then jumps to the present. The protagonist is Colin McIntyre, who is a lieutenant commander in NASA, who is testing a new deep space craft on the far side of the moon. He gets kidnapped by the computer Dayhawk that controls the starship. The ship makes him captain so he must help defeat the mutineers in time to prepare for the aliens who are heading this way. And yes, the mutineers are still alive. And how they do it, it introduces an element of horror into the story. The first book deals with the war to defeat the mutineers. The Armageddon Inheritance begins where the last book ended. The mutineers have been defeated and most of Earth's governments have collapsed. Colin McIntyre has made himself governor of Earth backed by Dayhack's imperial weapons. An old imperial scanning network has warned that the aliens called the Achultani are two years away from Earth. Colin heads to the heart of the Empire to get what help he can to come defend Earth. He leaves Horus in Mutine turned loyalist in charge of preparing Earth for the fight against the Achultani. The story switches point of view several times following both Earth's preparation and Colin's flight to get help. The second half of the Armageddon inheritance begins from the viewpoint of a member of the Achultani, whose name is Bashil. Bashil is with the Achultani scouts that are coming to attack Earth. This is when the fight to defend Earth begins. While this is happening, Colin is in the Bia system reactivating some battleships to come to Earth's defense. As Earth is about to get smashed, Colin comes to the rescue. When the battle is over and they are going through the remains of the alien ships, that is when they realize that the bulk of the alien fleet is still coming, that they were just fighting a scouting force. So the fight ships from Earth to uh, other solar systems in deep space. By the end of the book, Earth is safe for the time being, but the threats still exist out there. The final book in the series, Heirs of Empire, opens up following the kids of Colin and Jiltanith and their friends. 
They are about eight years old when the story begins. It sets up the storyline that will develop later in the book, such as there is someone who is trying to overthrow the emperor and empress who worked for the mutineers. Oh, did I mention that Colin became emperor in the last book? Well, he did. He got married, had twins by the end of the book. Anyway, after that, the story jumps about 10 years and the twins and their friends are at the academy. The person who is trying to overthrow their parents tries to kill them, but he fails. And his attempt ends up sending them and marooning them on a distant planet. Now this planet survived the death of the last empire. The planet exists as a kind of feudal theocracy. So the kids have to organize revolt and fight against the church that controls the planet so that they can get to the equipment that they must use in order to send a message to get help. While all this is going on, back in the empire, the royal family finds out that the person is trying to kill them and they must hunt that person down before that person destroys the capital planet in an attempted coup. In the first book, all of the action, or most of it anyway, happens on Earth. All of the fighting between two factions trying to control the planet. The mutineers and Colin and Dehag's people. The action takes place in North and South America, Asia, Europe, and culminates in Antarctica. In the second book, you have a space battle in orbit around Earth in the far reaches of the solar system and in other solar systems between the aliens and the forces from Earth. In the final book, you have a feudal society where there's lots of fighting going on and also on Earth you have a detective story, sort of, where they're trying to find who is trying to overthrow the Empire. I think this is a very good book and the people who like Star Wars and stuff like that will like this one. So my recommendation is to get it read it and enjoy it. Anyway, that's all for now. Thank you for listening and watching.